show you a couple of tricks with Google Slides to help you make drag and drop activities um, really quick and easy for you. So right here, I started making a sentence scrambler and these are from Lucky Little Learners, the printable versions. What the students would do is they would open the Google Slide and all of these word cards they can see here and they can drag them into the boxes and then rearrange them to unscramble the sentence. And it's really great for them to practice um, grammar and you also like punctuation, capitalization, forming complete sentences, all of that stuff, okay? So what I did to create this, um, the first thing I did is you're gonna open a new Google Slides and then you're going to go to page setup and you're gonna change the settings so that it's 11 by 8.5 and you just choose custom here. And then it will match the dimensions of the PDF. So then in the PDF, um, what you're going to do is you're going to screenshot these cards. So if you don't, if you're creating this from a PDF and you're doing like a drag and drop, you can just screenshot um, the individual pieces and that will create image. When you're screenshotting, try and zoom in a little bit more just so it doesn't come out pixelated on the other end when you're importing it as an image into Google Slides. So I'm gonna do these little, um, the sentence two that have this little duck in the corner. So I'm just gonna screenshot, and these lines are so convenient for me um, to just screenshot each of these cards. And I know it can be tempting to think, oh my gosh, I have to screenshot every single one of those cards. But think about how if we were making this printable for our kids, we would have to cut out every card. Um, so I'm gonna, just going to screenshot all of those cards, okay? And then what you're going to do is in your Google slide that you had open, the first thing you're going to do is actually go to slide and then go to edit master. And what you're going to do is find the blank. So it's usually at the end. And you're just going to duplicate that whole bunch so that you basically have a bunch of blank slides, however many you're going to want for your slideshow. Okay, and then all of these other ones that come in the template, you can just delete so that I just have a bunch of blank slides um, to be used. Okay, so then I'm going to just close out this right here, and then I'm just going to grab a new one, and I'm going to do just a blank slide. I'm going to do blank two right here. Okay. Now, what you can do is change the background color. So I did orange on the last one. Maybe I'll do green on this one. And then you can see I added this little table to the slide so that they have somewhere to drag and drop things. So you're going to go to insert table. It's really helpful for kids if they have a place on the slide that shows them where to drop something um, rather than just like a blank slide. If you think about it like um, if they were cutting and gluing things, it would be very hard for them to cut and glue and assemble something if it doesn't have outlines or a, a landing spot. Okay, so you can change the border color of your table, you can change the width of your table if you want dotted lines instead of solid around the edges of your table you can do that um, you can change the coloring behind your table if you do want it a different color um, you just want it white um, so I'm not going to do it white because my cards are white <laughs> and so we're just going to go back to transparent okay so now I don't want the students to be able to move this table around I don't want them to be able to delete it. So you're going to right click on the table and you're going to say add to theme and just click that blank too. So now they can't edit anything. They can't change it. They can't delete it on that table. It's stuck to the slide with the template. So then if you went to your layout and you looked at blank too, you can see it has that table on it. Um, at, and it's part of that master slide now. Okay, so now I need my images, so I'm just going to go to insert image, 
grab them from my computer, grab the screenshots I made. Yours won't have little orange bar um, circles in the corner. And then you'll right click and you're going to align horizontally and then you're going to align vertically. So now they're all in a pile and then click format options. Make sure your lock aspect ratio, this one is checked. And then you're going to change the width so that they fit. And then it just changed the width for all of those pieces. And they're all nicely stacked in a pile. If you want to drag them over, you can just um, select them all and move them over a little bit. And then the students will be able to click here and drag them onto the um, table, like the formatting thing, um, landing spot that you made for them. Okay, and now let's say you wanted to add some directions on this slide. So you can go up here to the text box and you can do a text box with directions or maybe you wanted to have a name spot. Um, so I'm just going to write directions secured to the background because I don't want them to accidentally delete the directions and I don't want them to accidentally um, be dragging this one around while they're trying to drag the other pieces around. So anytime you have an interactive slide, I highly recommend securing anything that you don't want moved to the background. <laughs> so you're just going to right click again and you're going to click add to theme and then just add it to this blank too. So now they can't move these directions anywhere and then they can still move these because we didn't secure those to the background. We added them on top. So then they can't get rid of the directions and they can't um, delete it, change it, drag it around accidentally, etc. Okay, so then um, you're just going to keep going and then if you want to do another one, um, you have these options here. If you're going to have a whole bunch with the same exact background, you can just keep, keep creating from that layout you have. If you are going to have a little bit different things secured to the background, then you can keep creating from these extra blank slides that you added, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to add another one of these because I'm going to need another one for the next sentence. And then I can change the background color to be different on each one and it won't um, remove the shapes or the text boxes or anything else. So then I can add in my cards. I could add in my sentence number on here. I could secure this to the background because I don't want them to be able to um, drag that sentence number around. Okay, so then one other thing I want to show you is if you want to be able to have multiple students working on this at the same time, um, let's say you have like partners or groups and you want to assign, I think there's nine sentences or 12 sentences in this sentence scrambler packet, 12 sets in here. So maybe I want to have some groups. Maybe I want to have like six groups and I'll load in six sentences. Okay. So what you can do is assign them each one of these slides and you can click right here on grid view so that you can see what they're all doing at the same time. So you could do this face in your face-to-face -face classroom, or you can do it through like Zoom or Google Meet if you have breakout rooms. Um, and you can just share the link here. Copy this link after you change the restrictions, copy the link and share it in the chat in Google Meet or Zoom or in your classroom, push it out into Google Classroom um, or something like that. And then you can say if you're in breakout room one or your partnership one, you're gonna work on sentence number one. If you're in partnership two, you're gonna work on sentence number two. And obviously we'll need a little training. That's typical with anything. And then what they'll do um, is be working on this and you can see uh, while they're working uh, what they're doing on here because you're looking at grid view. You're looking at everyone's all at once, which is super convenient if you have lots of slides. Um, and then you don't have to just scroll through to watch everyone's. You can just click on grid view and see how everyone's doing. You can zoom out 
if you have even more. So you can see um, all at the same time. So there's a few things with Google Slides and creating interactive activities. I feel like I barely touched the surface with this. And so let me know in the comments if what you want to know. What do you want to know how to create? Um, what do you, what questions do you have? Um, how can I help?